Hello everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Brick. Boone here at Bricks by the Bay. I am with three guys who have collaborated to build the American Wars through time. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? My name is Travis Wagner, also known as Lego Duct Tape on Instagram. Ty Wilkinson or Tie Fighter Bricks on Instagram. I'm Alexander Rubenstein or Alex Bricks on Instagram and Flickr. Since it's American Wars through time, got to start at the beginning, right? So we have the Revolutionary War here. This is just a small depiction of Valley Forge. So, you know, George Washington moved his troops into the forest, camped out there um, through the winter time. And uh, this is just like a little forest depiction. You got the campfire and a couple of Revolutionary War soldiers. And then they got like a captured British, captured British guy in there. And uh, yeah, Travis brought the, uh, the white leaves for me. Get that nice snowy effect. That's awesome. Thanks, Ty. How did you determine that uh, you would be the, the person to build, you know, this earliest, this earliest depiction here? Um, so the way we kind of split everything up was just we had a list of every war that we were going to do. And then, you know, if somebody wanted to do a certain one, they just say, you know, I'll take this war, I'll take this war. And then once we got all the ones that, you know, we, like everyone had a pick at, like they really wanted to do, then it was just like some leftover ones and... Uh, just kind of divvied those up, made sure we had them all covered, and that's that's how I got this one. Actually, it was just we needed this one covered, and so we just got it done. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Travis. Why don't you tell us about the next one we got here? So this is the battle where the USS Constitution gains its name, Old Ironsides, and so uh, the British ship, uh, pronounce it, uh, went against the USS Constitution, and the shots from the British ship are bouncing off the side. And so this is my little depiction, which was supposed to be bigger, but it had to come down to be a little bit smaller. This is great. I love it. You've done a great job with, you know, a relatively few number of pieces here. Thank you. Uh, Alex, you want to come in and tell us what we got here? Yeah. So this is from the Mexican-American War. It's the Battle of Chapultepec Castle. Uh, so this was a really last minute build because one of our builders dropped out. Um, so I ended up building it at the convention with just some limited pieces, uh, but I think it turned out okay. So we have every pre pretty much every war. That's fantastic. Okay, we're moving on, it looks like, to the Civil War. We got Ty here. Yeah, so this is uh, Torbert's Charge, and uh, I didn't have too many Union guys, so I decided I'll do a Cavalry Charge, and this is actually one of the largest, the actually the largest Cavalry Charge during the Civil War. There's about 8,000 Union Cavalry and uh, charging a Confederate line there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Cool. It looks like Alex is going to be able to tell us about the next couple of uh, builds here. Yeah. So first we have the Battle of San Juan Hill from the Spanish-American War. Uh, so I chose that uh, because it's one of the most famous battles. Teddy Roosevelt fought in it. It brought him a lot of fame, and he eventually became president largely because of his popularity after the battle. Um, so, yeah, it just really it's a lesser-known war in some ways. Uh, it was in Cuba. Uh, yeah, there were two hills, the San Juan Hill and Kettle Hill. This is the assault on Kettle Hill, uh, where the uh, Rough Riders are taking the uh, Spanish Trench. Um, and what's uh, Boba Fett doing back there? Um, <laughs> he's one of my first few figs I ever had. Uh, oh, that's cool. So it's pretty nostalgic. So I just concluded him as an Easter egg. <laughs> nice, thanks. What do we got next? Uh, we have uh, the... Battle of the Argonne Forest from World War One. So uh, this was part of the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, which is the largest um, American like uh, offensive in history, actually, which is pretty surprising when I was researching for it. Um, I took some of it from last year. I had a different battle, but I added more trees. I improved the trench and added a bunker. Um, and it was partially inspired by Battlefield One, the, um, a certain map there, um, and. Yeah, so that helped me build uh, the bunker and some of the other parts. Really cool. Thank you very much. All right, and then next up, we're moving into World War II. So I got the Sicily build back there. And uh, basically, once you know the Allies moved up through North Africa, we wanted to start invading um, you know, Europe, right? So moving across the Mediterranean, Sicily was one of the first things the Allies encountered. Um, right before we went into Italy, Italy, and um, 
it was mostly the British and the Americans on uh, in the, in this battle, and so uh, the British sweeped up the eastern side of the island, and the Americans invaded from the south, and uh, there was paratroop drops just like on D-Day the night before, but uh, heavy winds drifted them all over the place, so a lot of the American troops got scattered around, and that's why you see there's the uh, the American airborne there with the British troops, because they ended up way far away from where they were supposed to be in, in the British territory where they were invading, so this is just a, a small little port city in Sicily, and that's, that's about it for that. That's great. So looking at the looking at the helmets on this one reminds me to ask you guys: Do you, as a as a collaboration, have a preference on like where you get custom pieces from, or do you all kind of go wherever you need to to get what you want for a, a particular build? Uh, I know for me, it's a lot of mixing of you know Citizen Brick, um, the Minifig Co, some decaled stuff, some just like Lego things, and then you know brick arms for the accessories. Okay, cool. Is that pretty much what uh, what you guys have used, or? I just use the brick, ma or brick Arms helmet and vest. That's about it. Oh, cool. So we have the Battle of the Bulge. Um, this battle was fought, uh, uh, it was a, the last German offen major German offensive of the war, um, and it was crucial for the Allies to hold against it, and they were able to, and they were able to push back within the month. And it was uh, from December to January, um, 1944 and 1945. Um, so this is 1945 when the Americans are finally taking back what they, uh, the trenches they had originally. Cool, thank you very much. Ty, we got Iwo Jima here? Yeah, so Iwo Jima, one of the final battles of the Pacific Theater, uh, really iconic with its black sand, you know, because Mount Suribachi, the volcano on the island, um, that's, that's the reason that there's the black sand, right, the volcanic um, rock. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different, you know, break away from just the dark tan and the tan and uh, that's why I decided to go with that. And it's it's a pretty iconic battle. That's the one where the, you know, the famous like American flag raising on the top of the mountain. So, um, yeah. And then I got the LVTA, there. It's like the tank version of the landing craft. So, yep. Yeah. So next we have the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir from the Korean War. Um, this battle um, was the last one fought in North Korean territory, um, and it was a strategic retreat by the Americans. They lost. Um, but they were able to take out most of their forces. There were a lot of Marines, there were some tanks, and um, yeah, so th it was crucial for them to get out of there, but um, still hold the line later. Yeah, next we have the Battle of Saigon in 1968, um, which was part of the Tet Offensive. So that was um, when a lot of North Korean, uh, nor sorry, North Vietnamese, um, a lot of uh, Viet Cong, um, they came in and they uh, got ready for battle, and then they all on the holiday of Tet, which is the Lunar New Year, um, they were able to uh, attack American and South Vietnamese positions. Um, and it, while there was some, a lot of the fighting, there were a lot of cities that they fought in. Um, the battle didn't last for long in most of them. Uh, only in Saigon, around Saigon, um, the capital of South Vietnam, and uh, Hue City, and a few other places like outposts. Uh, those the battle lasted for much longer, like a few weeks longer, and um, so this is Saigon, uh, which is yeah. Cool. I love the the bright light orange bike in there. It's a adds a little bit of color. Yeah, it adds a little color. It, uh, in a lot of the reference pictures, Saigon seemed like a kind of colorful city, not too drab, um, but it, there were some parts like that with color, and it was nice to get that in there. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Travis, you want to tell us what's going on here? So this is the Battle of 73 Easting. So what had happened is when Iraq invaded Kuwait, they brought their entire um, armored division. So what we used is we had GPS that was first coming out, and they had the United States Coalition um, use the 70, 73 Easting is basically lines on a map. So they followed those map and basically a... Um, uh, land or featureless desert that the Iraqis didn't think we could cross. So we caught them off guard and it was a very one-sided battle with about 30 casualties on our side and over a thousand on their side. Wow, I really uh, think you're kind of depicting black smoke here. With Can you tell me a little bit about that? I think it looks really cool. So this is uh, plates and then it uses some studs with hair on the back to give it kind of that 
uh, movement of the smoke coming up. That's really nice. Thank you, Travis. Let's see. Up next here, we got Alex. Yeah, so this is the second Battle of Fallujah in 2004 in the Iraq War. So the Iraq War started in 2003, and it was fighting against the Iraqi government. Uh, but this was the first battle fought against uh, entirely insurgents, or mostly insurgents. This was almost entirely insurgents. Um, and it was uh, in the city of Fallujah. There was a lot of close quarters combat, which I tried to depict with this building here. Um, and sticking to the wall. And um, yeah, so there were the Marines that fought. There were uh, Iraqis. Uh, the new Iraqi government fought the security forces. Um, and then some British also fought in the same battle. So this is the war in Afghanistan. Uh, this happened after 9-11 and we went into Afghanistan to kick out the Taliban. What we wanted was a quick and uh, maneuverable war. And we, what turned out is we just got bogged down in it. We are still in there today, and it's been our longest war um, to date. And Okay, thank you very much, Travis. I'd like to ask you guys just kind of some general questions about the collaboration. How did you decide that the three of you were going to be working on this? How did you communicate? I'm assuming you're not all from the same place. So tell me just a little bit about how your collaboration worked. So last year we all met at the convention. Um, Ty and I had known each other, but we met Travis and... Uh, we decided towards the end of the convention that it would be really cool if we could do something with so many different wars uh, that could kind of encompass all of like American history. Uh, we had done Vietnam War models and just individual wars, but we thought it would be cool if we could have a bunch of small um, uh, builds and collaboration uh, that we could do. So we planned it for next year. We started kind of early to uh, get ideas out there, what wars would we do. Um, who would do them, and then um, we started to build later. That's really great. Did you do like most of your communication through email or like in social media? How did you handle that? Um, you yeah, mostly through Instagram. Instagram. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything that in, that any of the three of you incorporated into these builds, like really awesome features that we haven't touched on yet? Does anybody want to point out anything that uh, is unique? Um, so we decided to go with completely freeform builds for all of them and uh, the plates on the side for the borders instead of you know having like a finished off um, with bricks on the side and uh, that was just to give it more of like an organic feel to kind of get that flow going between the two you know like between the different mocks so yeah I think that's I think that's really good and and you guys Correct me if I'm wrong here I think you've said like you feel pretty confident and and and, and pleased that you've pretty much nailed every single American war, is that correct? At least the, the major ones, or like, you know, the, the bigger ones. <laughs> sure, okay, well this is really great. I think our viewers are gonna love this. I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time uh, to, uh, to show this with us today, and, uh, and we'll see you next time.